Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Just My Opinion Reviews. It is that time of year again, the end of the year, where I make my top 10 best, worst, favorite, all that good stuff. So already, um, you probably already seen my top 10 favorite or top 15 favorite films of 2018. You've seen my top 10 worst of 2018. And this is my top 10 best of 2018. Like, so why, the way I explained it in my uh, top 10, top 15 favorite of 2018, best and favorite are different. My top 10 best is a more of an, more of an objective approach. I'm taking my bias out of it. I'm trying to take my opinion out of it. Uh, my favorite is a more subjective approach. Yes, I still I still am using uh, subjectivity uh, when I'm going down my objective list, my top 10 best list. But the subjectivity becomes first. Now, I have not seen every film that has come out this year. And um, there are some films that are people are saying that are the best of the year and all that good stuff. And I haven't seen it, so I can't talk about it. And I actually had those films written down, the ones, but I think I threw that list away, knowing, not knowing that I was going to use it again. But I, I think I have it memorized. So some of the films that possibly will be on other critics' list or other reviewers' list or other pundits' list that I haven't seen that I haven't seen is probably going to be an Oscar contender. I'm just going to go ahead and list right now. Just so you like, you'll know why those are not on my list. But the first one is mid '90s. I heard that film was great, but I haven't seen it. Second is Eighth Grade. Uh, a third one is Unsane, Roma, and The Favorite. Now there may be a couple of other films that um, are on a lot of people's top ten lists. I just cannot think about them on the, off the top of my head. I thought I had that written down, but it, it's okay. It's no big deal. But guys, so this is my top 10 best. Basically, everything on this list, I feel, has the option to win best picture. Now, um, I only really came up with nine films, but I wanted to I wanted to make 10. But then I thought about it a little bit more, and I actually have 11. So uh, number 11 is an honorable mention. This film right here was also on uh, my... Um, no, it was not on my top favorite. Uh, but coming in at number 11 is The Mule, which recently just came out not too long ago. It's in theaters right now. Written and directed by Mr. Uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, great film. If you go check out my, my review for it. It's you know it's somewhat of a simple, uh, concise story, loosely based on a true story. But the execution in this film was just fantastic. I love the performances. I just like the way that the story was told and the pacing of the film. I think that was one of the best things about it. I also just like how uh, Clint Eastwood focused on the, uh, the family dynamic and their relationship at the very beginning of the film, just to kind of show you know you how what type of relationship he had and what type of man this guy was. Um, but uh, other than that, I mean, there's, you can go check out my review, my review for the film, but I thought it was great. Um, like I said, the story was great. The pacing was fantastic. The acting was great. I, I, I loved it. Uh, there were, you know, Clint Eastwood, he's always, you know, playing with race and things like that, racism and, you know, has, you know, um, just always something thought provoking. Um, it was one of my commenters that, uh, on this review, I like his comment. I didn't even, you know, he, he gave his two cents on the racism or whatever. I think it was a white guy. And I really did appreciate uh, his perspective on some of the things that uh, especially all the white people can say. So I appreciated that comment. But coming in at number 11 is The Mule. Um, it's freaking fantastic. Um, and, you know, it possibly a best best picture contender coming in at number 10 again is going to be a tie. I can't because I still can't decide which film I like more. And that is uh, Black Panther and Avengers Infinity War. I own both of those right there. Still, guys, I cannot determine which film I like, like more. It's just too difficult. I also have it in 3D right here so you can get the IMAX ratio. And oh, my gosh, the IMAX ratio is worth it, guys. Even if you want to watch it in 2D, if you have a 3D TV and if you don't have a 3D TV and you want to watch it in 2D, email me and I can teach you how to convert the file because I had to figure it out myself. But. Both of those films is fantastic. I mean, the, the acting, I mean, I can nitpick both of those films too if I want to, but I'm not going to do that. 
But uh, both of those films had uh, very compelling antagonists in the film. Thanos is a villain. Uh, I'm not going to call Killmonger a villain. I'm just going to call him an antagonist. Um, you know, the effects was great. The costume was great. The acting was great. The story was great. I love both those films. Both of them have done stuff for me technically and creatively that I've never seen before in a theater going experience. So those that's why I put those on my top 10 um best films of 2018 that have a list uh, a way of winning best picture now these have a, a, a number of ways to win oscars and a number of different categories but you know i think they possibly deserve a shot at best picture but these are in sequential order um of of uh, my opinion of them of uh, how much i like them Coming in at number nine right here. This is also on my top 10 favorite list of 2018. And that is The Incredibles 2. I love this film right here. There's really nothing that I don't like about it. Uh, the effects were great. The story was great. And the characters was great. The only thing that did not make this film a perfect 10 out of 10 to me was the villain was a little... Uh, he, was, he wasn't as good as he possibly could have been. I think the villain was better in the first film. But all around, guys, this was an incredible film. I love it. That's why I have it not only on Blu-ray on 4K right here. It's something that I can watch over and over again. Not only is this my, one of my favorite films of 2018, I think this is one of the best films of 2018. This is not just for children. This is for adults. Uh, it's, it's really compelling story, 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 storytelling. They really thought everything through. And I love this film. Uh, coming in at number uh, coming in at number eight. Let me mark these out real quick. Um, is a film directed by Mr. Bradley Cooper. I believe this was his directorial debut, and that is A Star is Born. Not only was his directing fantastic, but uh, his acting was as well complimented by the lovely Miss Lady Gaga. She is a fantastic performer, and it came through in this film, and she can also act her ass off too. I love the intro of this film and how it showed their relationship and how it bloomed uh, into something that couples can possibly aspire to. Um... I, it just the tension in this film, uh, just the way they communicated and everything about it, I just found was phenomenal. Now, this is number eight in this film because uh, I didn't put it at the top of my list because the film came in at around uh, two hours and 16 minutes. I feel that they could have sh shaved off about 15 or 20 minutes. There were a couple of pacing issues, um, but the film was still great. The story was still, you know, um, just out there outstanding and just the, those performances man the, the acting was 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 freaking fantastic there was i was almost in tears in my eyes at some points because it was just that sad and that daunting but also uplifting all at the same time so i really did enjoy this film it's probably nothing that i would buy and watch over and over and over again but you know because it's not one of my favorites this is not my style of film but i can still appreciate you know great filmmaking and that is why a star is born is on my top 10 best list of 2010 coming in at number eight now this film coming in at number seven was also on my top 10 favorite of 2018 and that is uh it was directed by john krasinski that is a quiet place um i think it's very hard to have a very great thought-provoking suspenseful mystery film when you don't really have any dialogue i mean the only thing you can do is they just come out and perform this with no words and they were able to do that okay I was able to tell with all their mannerisms and, you know, things like that, just of the stress, you know, that they had to go through to live in this lifestyle. I mean, and it was some, a lot of your edgy these moments, you know, there was, this is in the trailer, the scene where she's trying to have the baby. I was like, oh my gosh, how in the hell are they going to get out of this situation? You know what I'm saying? And I watched this movie. I can't even really talk myself because you don't want to disturb everybody else because it's a quiet movie. It's a quiet place. And when you can do that, when you can have that type of experience in the theater or even at home or whatever, it's just great. It's something that you've never, you know, experienced before, at least for myself. I love the film. Everything about it was fantastic. It, it is a great film. It is. I haven't bought it yet, but it probably is something that I'm going to be buying. And that is A Quiet Place coming in at number seven. One of the best films. One of my favorite films of 2000. 2018 and that's why it comes at number seven all right coming in at number six is a film that i was looking very forward to uh it, i feel that it paid off it's directed by mr peter uh Fer fairly and that is green book uh which stars mahershala ali and vigo mortison mahershala ali uh he was in um he was uh uh, he was one of the uh, villains in the Netflix series uh, Luke Cage. I can't, I don't, can't believe why I couldn't think of that. And also Viggo Mortensen. He was also uh, Aragon in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, Viggo Mortensen is playing a racist in this movie. Um, 
but the relationship between the two and the way they grew, uh, I loved. Uh, the timeline, the film takes place over like an eight or nine week period. I don't know if I can believe someone can make that big of a transition in eight weeks. But this is based on a loose uh, on a true story about how uh, in the dirty, dirty South in the 1960s, you know, black people had to carry around like a green book so they wouldn't get raped, tortured, lynched and things like that. Uh, you know, that, that, that was just that was just America. You know what I'm saying? You know, make America great again. Uh this is some crap that we had to go through, you know what I'm saying? And this film, you know, talks about it. Uh, the best thing about this just was the performances and also the story. I loved it. It touched me. Uh, it got me emotionally. People in, in the theater around me were crying and things like that. I love the film. If you want my full review for it, please go check. Please subscribe to my channel and go check out my full review for the film. But that is number six. Green Book coming in at number six. All right, guys, coming in at number five, this film was on my top 10 uh, favorite list of 2018 as well. And that is Creed 2, directed by Mr. Stephen Capel Jr. I love Creed 2 more than the uh, the first film, too. And I really feel like this is, you know, one of the best films. I would not be mad. I'd be really happy if this film won Best Picture because across the board, it was fantastic. I mean, I remember, I mean, maybe I had a gripe in my review, but right now I can't remember. But I remember having a gripe or two in Creed 1. But I did not have, I don't think I can remember any gripes in Creed 2. I love this film. I thought it was fantastic. Michael B. Jordan, Tessa Thompson, Sylvester Sloan was great. The story was great. Felicia Rashad was great. Uh, Victor Drago was great. Even the fact that we got a little bit of story uh, with all the rushes and what happened at the end of Rocky IV. This was like the perfect sequel to that film. It's the perfect sequel to Rocky IV. It's the perfect sequel to Creed One. It's just a great film across the board, and I love the guys. And that is why it is coming in at number five on uh, my top 10 best films of 2018. All right, we are now down to the final four films of 2018. This one was also on my top 10 favorite of uh, 2018, and that is The Hate You Give, written and directed or directed by Mr. George Timmer Jr., who did Soul Food, a Notorious, and also Man of Honor with Cuba Gooden Jr. Uh, this film spoke to me on so many ways. This film was like the perfect way to squeeze in real life and this political climate we're in into one movie to give you uh, so many different perspectives on black people, white people, the way they view racism, white supremacy. I mean, like I, it, uh, I, like every every character in this movie, I could point to somebody. Oh, I know somebody like that over here. I went to high school with somebody like this. I work with somebody like this. I, I, uh, one of my friends is like this. Somebody I like is like like this on both sides, black, white, red, yellow and brown on all sides. It was just a great film, a great story. Uh, had a ton of American DOS in this film, a ton of American descendants of slaves uh, in this film as well. Um, you know, it, it was great. Go check out my full review for this film. Please also go see this film if it's still in theaters in your area because it's doing horrible at the box office. But I love this film, The Hate You Give. I really do feel like the performances and the stories does put this up there to possibly win a uh, best picture. Coming in at number three is a film that I slept on. And I just recently saw it maybe 10 hours ago. And so many people were telling me, B, you got to see this film. B, you got to see this film. B, you have to see this film. I'm so glad I saw this film because that was right, guys. You was not lying, especially you, Cameron. I don't know if you're watching this, bro, but you uh, you hit me up on Facebook sometime. But that is Blind Spotting. This film was so damn amazing. Oh, my gosh. I love the title of this film, Blind Spotting. I don't want to necessarily tell you what the title of the film means because it reveals itself in the in the in the film and i just think it'll have more powerful impact if you see it yourself but this is a, a comedy crime and a drama you can take it seriously it's being directed by carlos lopez estrada it's a short film it's only an hour and 35 minutes so please check it out uh dave david diggs or david Diggs, dude who are you bro you are now on my list you are you was born in 1982 so that makes you 36 right now you'll be 37 in the new year bro i am putting you on my list like one of my favorite actors i've never seen you before you was um i see you was oh snap you was in that movie uh wonder mr brown and i love wonder wonder was one of my favorite films of 2017 and i remember you now but this guy right here this performance was just phenomenal i love the fact that this film right here it basically just kind of says f you to the stereotype the black stereotype of you know dreads braids that you're a thug you're a hoodlum you know you're a menace to society this flips around on his head and just like you know 
that, that kind of has to do with the title. I kind of, you know, I, I gave you a little nugget right there. But my goodness gracious, the last scene, one of the last scenes of this movie was one of the best scenes I've seen, like, in forever. Like, the, it, like this dude was going around freestyling his feelings and emotion in real life. And it, like, flows so well. It was so beautiful. Like, it was so much passion and truth in his performance. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, there's nothing wrong with dreads. And, like, it's, it's, not, it's not dangerous. It doesn't mean that you're anything. And he was like, man, F it, man. This is my identity. I, I just, I, I, bro, I feel the pain that he was going through in this film. It was just a great performance. The performances across the board were great in this film. It was a bunch of stupid characters, you know what I'm saying? But I love this film to death. I think you will too. Unfortunately, this film right here, I don't have a review for it up on my page. Um, and, you know, because I just saw it not so long ago. But, guys, it is a great film. I loved it. I strongly recommend you see this film. Man, I, I was feeling it so much. It was so much pain and heart in this film. And uh, I just got to give it to everybody. Not only I have to say one gripe, though. The only thing I did not like is the director gave the permission of some brown people to say the N-word in this film. I was not cool with that. It kind of pissed me off. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I did not like that. Now, I do. Now, when it comes to the N-word, I did like the fact that it brought to the forefront that other groups do use it behind closed doors. I like how they did that. Um because that's just the reality of the situation. But uh, other than that, one other thing, I, I, I just wasn't feeling that or whatever. Uh, but uh, Blind Spotting, one of my favorite films of this year. Uh, one of my uh, it, uh, best film of the year as well. And it's not even on my favorite list, but, you know, oh, well. All right, guys, we've got two films left. Uh, coming in at number two, best films of 2018. It was also on my top 10 favorite, top 15 favorite, and that is Black Klansman. I got that right there, baby. I love this film. It was freaking fantastic. Spike Lee, the director and the writer. Jordan Peele is producer. Jo John David Washington, uh, Adam Driver. This film spoke to me on so many levels. It, this the political climate that we're living in spike lee did that he always does his nice little dolly shot at the end i love that you know i love everything with the black panthers uh and when i was talking about this film right here i forgot somebody's name um and i want to look it up real quick um well i think it's Corey hawkins he was in um in straight out of compton let me see real quick i don't mind yeah Corey hawkins he played Qu uh, kwame Ture. Uh, I just I love this film. It just so unapologetic it was. The performances are great. The story was great. I was having a debate with somebody a while ago about the um, the, um, the the like if this film is completely based on a true story, and it may not be. Um, and they were kind of arguing like, "Hey, well, no, I don't want, I'm gonna keep this thing positive." I love the film. It's one of my favorites of the year. I think it was the best film of the year. On the on the cover, it says "A Stunning Tour de Force" uh, by A. D. Scott in the New York Times. I, I I do agree. It's just a great film. I really nothing I can complain about. And um, I, I really think you should see it. If you want to see my re full review for the film, please subscribe and go check it out. It is on my channel. But Black, we got Blast Klansman, baby, coming in at number two for my top 10 best films of 2018. And guys, last but not definitely, like, last and definitely not least, this is uh, the best film of the year to me. Um, I really would love this film to win uh, Best Picture. Um, if it doesn't, I mean, hey, it is what it is. But um you know i really did love this film also hold on let me just pull up something else real quick yeah that's cool right there okay guys coming in at number one for the best film of 2018 the film that i want to win best picture it was based on a novel of the same nine by brother james Baldwin. rest in peace my brother it is written directed by baby jenkins and that is if bill street could talk oh man this film right here this film right here i talked about how the hate you give um, Blast Klansman and Blind Spotting spoke to me, and this Bill Stricker talk spoke to me even more. Um, I said before that this, I said this in my review, I said this in my top 10, top 15 favorite of 2018, that this film right here is a textbook example of black love, not only from the main two uh, protagonists in this film, the actor and actress, but the entire film itself, the love and the family, the love and their relationship, the love in the film itself, and just your fellow neighbor. There was just, there's just so much love in this film. And, but besides all the love, it's just the performances that complement it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, about this film right here, I love Fani. I don't think I said this in my review because I was so excited and I was geeking out. I didn't even cover all my notes, but you know, um, when it comes to a relationship, of course, women, you know, of course you want a good 
strong looking man. You know, you probably possibly want him to have muscles. You want him to look good physically. You want him to treat you well and talk to you well and listen to you. You also want good sex. I mean, these are givens, you know, uh, but, but on top of all that, you know, ladies, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think a woman wants a mind and wants a man that can have a stimulating conversation that can elevate her mind to a place to where she's never thought before. You know, someone that can just make her think and challenge her, expose her to things that she's never experienced before. I, I think that's something that a woman would appreciate. And that's what Mr. Brother Stephen James Alonzo Funny Hunt did in this film. And um, the way it was illustrated on film, you know, he lit up the room. Uh, with smiles, you know, just being himself. And that's just something that I really do love. This film right here, the way they were just showing how a father or husband loves the mother in front of the children is something I think is extremely important in any family, no matter what skin color they are, but especially the back, black family with all that we go through. And and they, they put all this in the film. I mean, we get dramas, we get comedies, we get biographies, but I really can't remember how many films we get that have to do that it has to do with like a deep enduring love story. And this film of uh, Bill Street Could Talk uh, is all of that and more. The soundtrack in this film, the score was one of the best scores I've ever heard in my entire life. Not the best, but one of the best. I can possibly say top 10. Some of you may disagree with me on that front, but that's perfectly fine because this is my list. And if you have your own, that's perfectly fine as well. But I will be buying this film when it comes out. Brother Barry Jenkins, who also, he wrote and directed this, like I said. He also did um, Moonlight, which won the award two years ago. But this is just all around a fantastic film. I loved it. And I think you will too, guys. But let me go ahead and recap. That sums up my top 10 best films of 2018. My best picture contender list. And coming in at number 11 is The Mule. Coming in at number 10 is a tie between Black Panther and Avengers Infinity War. Coming in at number 9 is The Incredibles 2. Uh, number 8 is A Star is Born. Number 7 is A Quiet Place. Uh, number 6 is Green Book. Number 5 is Creed 2. Number uh, 4 is The Hate You Give. Number three is Blind Spotting. Number two is Blessed Klansman. And number one, uh, my I think is my best film of the year, is If Bill Street Could Talk. Again, there are films that I haven't seen. I haven't seen The Favorite. I haven't seen Roma. I haven't seen Mid-90s. I haven't seen Unsane. I haven't seen Eighth Grade. Those are just films that I've heard on other people's lists and things like that. I haven't seen them. Maybe I, I probably will see them eventually, but, you know, just not in time for this video. But, guys, that is just my opinion for my top ten best films of 2018 what did you think did you like them did you hate them did i turn you on did i turn you off do you agree with me or do you disagree with me let me know down in the comment section below let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing if you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you don't that's fine but you can still subscribe to my channel you can also look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff it's right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys Guys, this was a lot of fun. Uh, I did not get around to uh, seeing uh, Mary Poppins Returns, Vice, or that uh, Sherlock Holmes movie or whatever with uh, Will Ferrell and John C. Riley. I probably will see it eventually. But this is a lot of fun. 2018 was a great year. Um, I had so much fun. My next video will possibly be a review of those films I just listed or uh, my most anticipated films of 2019. It just depends. I may make other lists. I may not. But guys, this was just a whole bunch of fun. And I want to thank you so much again for tuning in to my opinion slash review or this other episode of my top 10 best films of 2018. And before you guys, before you go, guys, don't forget to always chase your dreams because I'm chasing mine. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.